Hi, everyone. We're going to start in five or so minutes, um, but just get settled and we'll, we'll be back soon.
Hi, my name is Stella. Um, I work at Artist Space, and I am one of the organizers of this season's Segway, along with Jay Sanders. Um, and this is the first reading in our series. There will be seven more readings following this one every Saturday at 5 p.m. throughout the rest of February, March. But today, we are thrilled to have the poets and artists Coco Moore and Tongo Eisen Martin here to read. So I will go ahead and introduce Coco, um, and then there will be, she'll read, and there will be a brief intermission, and then we'll reconvene for Tongo's reading after that. So it's a great pleasure for me to introduce Coco today because I've known her for a while. In fact, we grew up around the corner from each other in a small town in Massachusetts, and somehow because of that, we ended up carpooling to art camp together as children. But it wasn't until recently that I've reconnected with Coco, running into her every so often at art and poetry events around the city over the past couple of years, and curious about who Coco was now, since that time that we silently traveled to and from camp together in probably our most awkward stage of life, at least for me, I looked a little more closely into her work. Raised in a distinctively artistic household by the main vocalists of Sonic Youth, I discovered that she had become a visual artist and poet in her own right. I imagine because of her upbringing, she must have always been pushing against something in her art, no doubt aware of a creativity projected onto her and possibly desiring to make something different and uniquely her own. And evidently, it is through her poetry that she has found a singular voice, one characterized by humility, emotionality, and a soft but determined strength. The author of three chapbooks, a sketch of romance, Today I Hate the Sun, and a recent collection of poems entitled Waiting Room. She has been quietly but consistently releasing work, both self-published and through small presses. In Waiting Room, a brief but potent rumination on sickness and sex, and the sickness of sex, bodies contract and malfunction, ultimately bending to pressure outside the skin. Pleasure, endurance, repressed desire, and the overwhelming and inescapable sensation of losing control over one's flesh and one's heart spill out across the book's pages. Simple and understated on the surface, her words resound at times painfully as if scratching an ever-present age-old wound. Her visual work, which primarily consists of text-based paintings and drawings, take on a diaristic approach that connect words with color and light and in many ways embody the feeling of her poetry caught between moments of airiness and encumbered weight. Coco's art has purpose to you outside itself, co-evolving alongside her activism. Last year, Coco put together, maybe, was it last year? But 2019, not last year, 2019, <laughs> put together a group show at Rena Spalling's gallery to raise money for the Brooklyn Community Bail Fund. <laughs> uh, assembling a group of artists, um, including Susan Cianciolo, Bill Nace, Charlotte Fox, Elaine Kahn, Violetta Mayo, Emily Wang, and am among many others, um, to foreground the important work of this critical organization, uh, which is committed to ending the unjust system of cash bail. And Coco is currently working on a full-length book of poetry. I'm not sure when it's gonna be published. <laughs> um, so without further ado, Please join me in welcoming Coco here today. Thank you so much. That was such a generous intro. Um, thank you for having me, Stella and Jay, and our space and the Segway series. It's such a cool series, and I'm um, oops, um, so excited to be here reading. Um, I'm mostly going to read from my book and then uh, probably end with a few new pieces that are going to be in the full length. Um, but yeah. Okay. 
Big C. We get to the beach. The wind is strong. I feel so large today. I already regret not wearing that dress. You work hard building us a tent with just a stick, some rocks, a sheet. It's my first time on the surf, the swell. You fuck me out in the wide blue open. First love, pushed. Even when I sneezed, he made me feel sexy, like so, so, so sexy, yes. When I had braces, he would come always. Sometimes cigarettes go by too fast. I can't lie. It's been hard hardening. Left to waste, I waste myself. My weedy body clings to an old bed. I close my eyes and think of your smoky breath your salty hair, a frozen pizza. I love to fuck alone under my weighted blanket, pretending it's you spread on top. I look up at the sky and see a plane. No one here has ever made me this wet. On the windowsill sits a small cup you made. Under a tree, I scrape some frozen dog shit. Untitled, my G-spot is missing. I want to be taken by a vaginal orgasm, but I can't even get a hit of one. I used to not be able to come at all. Should I be grateful for what I have now? I like that pleasure is confusing, though I find myself jealous of how easy it seems for some. The shoe fix guy always shakes his head and laughs when I bring in my broken heels that I bought from Goodwill. I guess I care about how things age. I never know how to say it. Sex is getting better, that's good news. The shoe fix guy tells me to go buy some new shoes. The ones I have aren't worth the money. Untitled soft head. It's hellish to think of your lip, the feeling of hands gently pulling me towards a warm car. I lay my body on the pavement. I hurt my lower back. I'll do anything for love. I'll fly to California. Untitled, Coco got caught in a riptide. Angry, I sit on the floor surrounded by my shit. My clothes look too good on me. I care about them. I leave them crumpled on the floor. It's the small things I hold on to. Moldy dish towels, ratty boxer briefs from my ex, a book I'll never read. Am I an awful person? I want to be held so tight that I don't care if I am. I want waxing surfer arms to take my breath away. It's not about wanting to die. I just want to feel turned on or something similar to feeling turned on. I rub my boobs. I hug a pillow. I, found my, I find myself imagining what people will say when I die. Not about missing me or loving me, but the act of my death. I'm feeling reckless. I want to move. I'm Googling small beach towns.
Right, this is part two of the book. <clears throat> Waiting room. My cousin tells me that it was dark and softball sized. It took them eight hours to remove venom watching in the eyes. My eye paces your lips, your body, a bag, a sore. Sometimes your body is everywhere, ecstatic and the poison has left your veins. The poison is in this bucket. Afterwards, we take the ferry home. Mom wants to go out to dinner, but my feet are killing me and I need a cigarette. I drive like hell, hoping there's an end. His small mouth asks me, have you ever had cancer? And I can't hold on or care about poems. I never thought you, I only thought breathless. Say it like a baby. The centipedes have finally left me alone. I don't miss them at all. You were so good killing them, holding me. His eyelashes fell out. I say it like a baby. You say nothing at all. Clinic. Here, she says, passing you the small mask with faded Mickey Mouse print. You quickly grab it, crying, unwilling to put the strings around your ears. It sits, pathetically clinging on your wet lips. I hold my eyes wide open into your mother's eyes. And if I blink or look away, I'll disappear. The nurses try to follow your lead. Go slow and count to five, you demand. It's hard to get to five when your skin hurts. Gloved hands fly about. Your small body violently bucks away. Gloved hands on your skinny arms, gloved hands on your chest. The sound of your scream, your body pinned, makes a new person inside of me. The fear, oh, the fear. I don't take my eye off the nurse's blue hands. Your body belonging to the doctors and cheerful nurses, to the needles and fluids and the baby and the sickness, to mom and dad and me, to Aunt Elle and Aunt Ooh, to Sophie and the gods and the cancer and the soil of your favorite park, to this bed and this bubble, to the knife and the old white man who wields it, to my choices, to their choices, to the ones they have to make in darkness when they don't know what the sickness wants or why it is after their child. <clears throat> Sometimes chemo saves lives, but mostly it just kills. Sometimes out of nowhere, a sharp pain under my jaw, around my neck, and I think of you, and I think of cancer, and how I should go to the doctor. The doctor is a man's man. I know how his laugh sounds. Pinning my anger to trash on sidewalk, I kick and spit and hold my ears. Tinnitus has returned. A thumping echo from running water. I'm sinking in a pool. Witnessing you at the hospital, your skin a shade I've never seen. The color is sickness, is red, is gray, is orange liquid in your veins, is the smell of creamed corn. If I could be sick, if I could place the tumor inside me, I wouldn't take the drugs. Sometimes I pray. I'm bound to this blue sofa bed, ass stuck to cushion, fear stuck to chest, 
and I can't remember when things were okay. Seeing you every day, seeing you never, now seeing you're moving. The wind steals, the wind changes. I hug an empty hand, I hug the white wall. A box of tax bills out on the floor and I want to step on them all. I don't believe in God or medicine or this life or this knife or science or earth or birth control or love or fuck or come. I asked the wall to kill me a thousand times but heard nothing back. Siren for Katie. <clears throat> I've never loved anyone quite like this. Quiet in your arms, you raise me, raising your glass of wine to mine, showing me what it is to breathe, to enjoy small pleasures. Red hair in my dreams, red hair whipping around hospital corners. I watch the gods try and break you. I watch you spit into the long eye of cancer. When I was little, we would act out Little Mermaid. You were always Ariel, forcing me to be the sidekick. I can't believe where we are now. Your kids jump into your wide arms. Your husband gives you a kiss. You talk about pain. I play with your hair, the unbroken sea breaking. Delta, your lip is a sore, your mouth is a sore, your tongue is a sore, your throat is a sore, your esophagus is a sore, your gallbladder is a sore, your stomach is a sore, your small intestine is a sore, your anus is a sore, your entire digestive tract is a sore. Your body soars through the medicine. The medicine is supposed to know pain. You cry out for your brother. I hold the river and whisper your name. Don't you wanna breed with me? In truth, I am terrified of dying, and this terrifies me. There is no beauty in this. Why would there be? Phone call. That's me over there. Phone stuck to face, mouth agape, eyes filling with shit. My ears have become so hot, I repeat myself. Tumor, benign no, tumor full, heart crossing, wrong heart, full bad heart, benign no, tumor kidney, baby heart, benign no, heart tumor, cancer, 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 tumor kidney, not heart tumor, must be benign, no, no, she says bad, 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 bad. Very bad tumor. She landed in New York this morning. A rock floats inside me. I'm going to be sick. I'm heading to work. I'm hiding in the bathroom. I'm crying on the toilet. I'm modeling clothes. They dress my body. They compliment my body. Sexy body, rock body, healthy body. So healthy, I can't stand it. Untitled Crashing. I want to make sense of loss, hair, a tooth, white blood cells. But all I can think is sex and the big sea between us. Tell me to fly back to crane neck, long body. I'm gonna move on to some uh, new stuff. Um, different vibe.
<clears throat> I'm waiting to be delivered to evil. I run to death with my book of verse. I want death to give me back some notes. Flipping through the pages of my manuscript, death tells me it's my duty to kill myself. I think death is joking around with me, trying to give me a hard time. I told death I'm thinking of joining a cult they might know. It's called the Devil Worshippers. Death looks up annoyed. Death says, oh, the lovers of evil, they're a joke. Goes back to editing a poem and crosses out a line about courage. Death is a book clerk by day and a poet by night. Death is in a state. Death tells me only depressed people join cults. That way when they leave, they have reason on their side. Death has finished reading my book of verse and says, whatever you do, don't come back. I liked that line about courage. I came back. Underworld. In hell, everything is cool. Like, I'm the person I've always dreamed of. I'll work hard with intention, hate sucking dick to completion. It's my sin. I never know what to do when it's over. I'm trying to decide where in hell to live, stuck between a city and a sea. Can't make up my mind. That's another sin of mine. I met someone in hell. They offered me a small bowl they made in the crafts area. I keep my pennies in it and nail clippers. There is no true chemistry in hell. Hell is movement. Hell is Freudian obsessed. I think about my friend Mary and what she said about causing a man's death. I made him go down in that hole to the darkness. Man, hell would love her. I was promised something beautiful. California is all about money, blood, earth and dust, black crows hovering. I want nature to save me. Caught out in the desert, I took a cab to the middle where the suicide spot is a nice hole to die in. Being unhappy is a great sin. I'm getting nervous. The holiday is over. Heaven. You say I look good leaning back, smoking my cigarette. I pull you close my mouth tasting like a rabbit hole of gun smoke. Later, walking on Sunset Boulevard, I reach for your hand. I used to talk about the buck moon, thinking I knew what it meant, daring myself to say something about jealousy. I light one more cigarette, warming my lungs and breathe into the sky. When you tell me to repeat your words, it's never enough. To have you in memory forever, I stopped washing my clothes. Everyone is running down the beach to feel beautiful. It takes a while to be brave. I move through phases of it. Life's lessons in my eye, I look for places to rest. Cursing at birds, a creeping dawn sky. The knife by my bed is for emergencies only. Love poem number two. 
Obsession will tear apart a good mind. I touch a thousand things to stop thinking. The way you shake your hair like a dog. It's my last one. February. Torn open, I pull myself out of the grave I've been digging. Animals cry, but I don't recognize the sound. It's a new world. A stranger is now a son, and I am a beggar of love. Remember when you had me watch you kill that satanic bug? Life requires support. An orgasm requires focus. I crave the hard work it takes. A car curved around a tree. A row of girls in plastic dresses drinking Budweiser. Remember when sex used to be painful? I'm scared of the collections agency. So many tickets of all my wrongdoings. Let's start over. You touched me. New world. Crazy alive. I'm done with begging. Thank you. Hi, we're going to take a five minute intermission and then Jay will introduce Tongo.
Welcome back. Thank you so much, Coco. Um, I'm Jay Sanders, and it's my great pleasure to introduce our second reader, reader Tongo Eisen Martin. Yep. A poet whose work I came to know thanks to the Segway Reading Series when Kay Gabriel and Imogen Christian Smith presented him in 2021. Within the matrices of his poems, Eisen Martin conjures a chiar chiaroscuro of emotions and experiences, offering readers a prismatic lens through which to witness the unfurling layers of human existence. Eisen Martin's language is not merely a conduit. It's a living entity, pulsating with the dynamics of the streets and the heartbeat of collective struggle. Each line delivers a nuanced exploration of the intersectionality of identity, through the intricacies of race, class, history, and the myriad, myriad dimensions of oppression. His syntax is a rebellion, a deliberate disruption that mirrors both the radical nature of the movements he so ardently engages with and the harshness and violence of our time. The temporal states of past, present, and future interweave throughout Eisen Martin's verses, expressing a continuum where history converges with contemporary urgencies. Poetry as a temporal vortex, traversing epochs and witnessing the echoes of resistance across time. Metaphors and imagery intertwine as well with a profound alchemy, transforming the mundane into the extraordinary and the ordinary into a realm of profound significance. Yet amid these social and personal echoes, there exists a poetics of tenderness, an acknowledgement of the fragility of human experience in all its details and the resilience required to catalyze social transformations. The current Poet Laureate of San Francisco, Eisen Martin is also a movement worker, educator, and organizer whose work centers on issues of mass incarceration, extrajudicial killings of Black people, and human rights. He has taught at detention centers around the country and at the Institute for Research in African American Studies at Columbia University. He's the author of Somebody's Dead Already, Bootstrap Press 2015, and Heaven is All Goodbyes, City Light Books 2017 which was shortlisted for the Griffin International Poetry Prize, received the California Book Award for Poetry, an American Book Award, and a Penn Oakland Book Award. His latest collection, Blood on the Fog, was published by City Lights in 2021. Please welcome Tongo Eisen Martin. I had this uh, dream that I was laid up in the hospital and people kept coming into my room by the dozens. And each dozen had special handshakes for each other and occasionally current dance moves. And they would kick my hospital bed from time to time to let me know that they'd be dancing from this room on out to my grave. Strange cha-chas and soft shoe shuffles, disco spins like they were dancing for a white, white sundial marking numbness in their feet, drum race ride, and I was ready to die. 
Because, you know, ask a musician in the tunes after court, it's the surroundings themselves. It is the uniform, but still I couldn't bring myself to visualize against God. And one of them stood over me like a conductor, waving their arms over my body, directing my heart to beat fainter and fainter, directing the tubes to turn the fluids back. And I kept fading from consciousness with thud after thud on the legs of my bed as they danced, uh, wilder and wilder, wild but meek. Or artificially make like an artificial pastor told me I was to be some kind of um, projection or character to be laid at their feet. And you're the only one participating in the revolution today. They mocked and I was ready to go because you know, there's plenty of pianos that could use a new soul. And I'm being a revolution for as long as it takes. So you can punch me out now. I mean, I was born with one foot in the line pit anyway, but check it out. Uh, no one bothered to ask the doctor if I was really dead. It was just too, too busy strutting, too busy kissing and I kept. Fading and fading with only enough breath and sweet consciousness to count their smiles. One, two, three, four, five. And then I heard a, a voice, a whisper, and it was counting with me. Six, we said. Seven, we said. Eight. Then another voice joined us. Nine, ten, then another. You see. I haven't been eating, mama. I've been in a trance. I haven't been sleeping. I've been washing my face off the port of Charleston. There's blood on the fog. You know, these little uh, societies, they wander together like hopeful drops of a virus. Citizen testaments bent on off of me, a nation of breadwinners to hold me back like it's a Brinks. I wrinkle the concrete sometimes like flesh. My Martin Luther King permanence turned away from a podium into the reeds like God is a dangerous twin. Black August to the mountaintop balcony on my bedroom floor, you know, they steal you from the earth itself and suspend you and your broken neck from their foolish euphoria. From the loyalty over their great superstition, loyalty over their agrarian reform, I returned to my mother completely disrespected for peeling the heat off of purgatory. They kill poets like me. Walk me away from my poems, never to be heard from again in this, this final industrial complex of bloodlines picked over, picked through a sport and spiritual death of your devil at least half made. Police become a pretty word. I'm reading a lynch mob shoestrings like they were tea leaves, teaching you how to write about cities. This is the 25th century in the mirror, people. Tyranny against your chump chance, your chump to be mocked even with a gun in your car. A cubit of needlework spell tuned for the proletariat, the relapse ministry. Talented people curled up in a fetal position next to a diamond. Dying just another service day in the theatrics of tea house fascism in a bouquet of surveillance cameras in the poverty of God, new blue eyes, corpses of water, a newly potted presidency of one big shiny coin if you ask the animated capitalism and other non-literal voids killing his white freedom. The deification of hyphens. Medicine brand and picture shows, great protests in LA, guests of our ink, drop kicking rows in the graveyard, DC mink like a stone torn in half, the pen advances despite CIA guideposts, despite non African past and futures. A metaphorical but not surreal day in a horn written life horn player improvising king. Like a radio prize fight featuring Shango himself, a real hand sweeps the land of racism. Now return to the ground, now make progress with the gun on our mother Emmanuel, they put on music that evening. A swinging tight body language for you to drink with firm minutes, $5 bills. For your body language, some applause. My past stomach lining. Neither a good thing nor a bad thing, like being psychic on the way to a lethal injection. And it sits you down with Lady Day. Lady Day leading youth who surrendered their souls to Africa too soon. Potty thought floating in the cup of water. She saved me accessing my stomach, accessing the love of the American lynched. Coast sleeves wooden avalanche into the wrist. Our mother Emmanuel, avalanche into the sharp keys. Pain or the deal you make with pain. The piano makes sense for them. Lay hands on the world gradually. Addressing the bending necks on the streets of the north. Child of sailing in pain, repeating pain in the north. Ten trigger fingers on that piano of harmony would have me putting a hundred fights on every direction offered her lady day. Leaning on trees again, recruiting the countryside itself, saying, uh, lay your plan on this lightning. Make your poems a corner pocket of men. I greeted the blues itself. America may clean my dead body, but will never include me. There goes the poet. Killing without killing. Uh, never mind this painting of your language. May I be a meaningful lynching. A crow's passing, good and dead by the afternoon. 
And you know, that's, that's my cousin uh, eulogized now in literary history. Well, it wasn't pretty this effect on my eternal soul. Like belated parenting, we haunt each other in quick bursts. Sample the drug, wrestle the angel, no depth of setting. Imagine what defines a creature where, where remnants of concrete put none of the world down except slabs of a deadbeat nationalism or a bloodline making the news again true. I have an absence of style. I'm just a doorstep moving dead body to dead body. Picture 1960s newspaper clippings and teeth hanging on a string like a book of life. Cigaretting a pen, calling Black Friday to prayer. Unscrewing the blues I played down to aim to only die for money once. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we know what you all are not doing. Mainly you all are not leaving the universe to its childhood. The spirit world up and stars murdering city trees or psychic rebreaks sleeping in my car, Sunday chores, allegory of new hard R's, no going to regular people jail, no being hunted by regular people. Cause all I dream is the, uh, uh, Physical death, thinking about God and God emptying clumps of prison, my poem, my, my cubist remade scar, my Saturn IV adults, my junkie industrialism. I knew my father as much as I want to be known. While the uh, ruling class is printing judges, fiat kangaroos, <laughs> making judges hand over fists. Uh, rapture cop packs in opposition, whites all above a thorny stem. Cast plans picked out like vans for the murder. So you, you want me to raise a little slave, don't you? Bash their little brain in and, and send them to your, your civil rights. Like normal speed bullets changing a normal life. Like walking back to the United States in defeat. I go to the railroad tracks and follow them to the station of my enemies. A cobalt tooth man pitches pennies at my mugshot negative all over the United States. There are toddlers in the rock. I see why everyone out here got in a big cosmic basket and why blood agreements mean a lot and why I get shot back at. I understand the psycho spiritual refusal to write white history and take the glass freeway. White skin tattooed on my right forearm ricochet sewers near where I collapse into a rat infested manhood. My new existence is living graffiti in the kitchen with a lot of gun cylinders to hack up. House of God in part, no cops in part, my body brings down to Christmas. The new bullets pray over blankets made from the old bullets. Pray over the 28th hour's next beauty mark. Extrajudicial Confederate statue restoration. The waist band before the neck protest post. Hey, by the way, time is not an illusion, your honor. I will save your desk for last. You are witty, your honor. You're moving money again, your honor. It's only raining one thing. Now white cops. And prison guard shadows reminded me of spoiled milk floating on the oil spill. The neighborhood making a lot of fuss over his demise a new lake for a Black Panther party. Malcolm X's ballroom jacket slung over my son's shoulder, the figment of village. A new news to a new white preacher hauling an abstract painting of a president. Boss slavery some time, didn't it? The tattooed screeches of military boats and election Tuesday cars, a cold blooded study in leg irons, proof that some white people have actually fondled nooses there. Sundown couples made their vows of love over opaque peach plastic and bold action audiences. The Mega Ever Second is definitely my favorite law of science. Fondled news clippings and primitive Methodists, my arm changes imperialisms. Simple policing versus structural frenzies. Elementary school script versus even wider white specs and artists bleeding in the challenge of watching civilians think ter ter terrible rituals they have around the corner. They let their elders beg for public mercy. I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen these kids' heads and the elders myself and see how much gravy spills out of family crest. Modern fans of war, what the fuck with their t-shirt poems and t-shirt gilding. Me having on the cheapest pair of shoes on the bus, I had no choice but to read the city walls for, for signs of my life. Uh, you know, uh, first I, I should have apologized uh, to the souls of, of the house because I'm wearing the cheekbones of the mask only, um, like a pill bottle whose name is yours, name tagged on the uh, uh, side of a factory of wrists. I mean, uh, uh, teeth of the mask now, uh, back of the head of the mask now, a new phase of anti-anthropomorphism, family for real faces, stuck with one of those cultures that believes I chose this family. I, I'm not creative, just, just the silliest of the revolutionaries. My blood drying on my only jacket, the police state psychic middleman evangelizing for the creation of an unmasked and unmedgar. Uh, blood of a lamb, less racialized, an awesome prison sentence, right angle made between a point on a Louisiana plantation and a five-year-old's rubber ball, three feet high and falling like a deportee plane to complete my interpretation of garden variety genocide. I am small talk about loving your enemies a little more realistically about paper tigers and also gold. I need my left hand back. Broke my neck on a piano key, found paradise in a fist fight. Maybe I should check into the Cuban line watching the universe last metronome, some called Black Jacobins. They just wait. These religions will start resigning in a decade or two. Some Colorfully, some transactionally cotton gothic society. I mean, class betrayal gone glass this. I mean, ironically, my window started fogging over too. As I was trying to figure out which Haiti would get me through the winter, which poem houses souls with socialist breakthroughs. 
Breakthroughs like taking 10 steps back and finally trying to stand this, like introducing Gabriel Prosser to Thelonious Monk. I remember childhood, I remember the word childhood being a beginning. Scribbling on an amazing grace, I rented this body from some circumference of slavery. I remember being kicked out the Midwest, strange food theater, lithium in circuses like mine and stomachs, the ruling class, blessing their blank checks with levy fun, with opioid tea, sentient dollar bills, yelling to each other pocket to pocket, cello stands in the precinct for a company, counter revolutionaries. My mother raised me with a simple pain. A poet loses his mind, like the room has weather. Well, first girlfriend, gravity. Then between me and you, the madness wants me forever. A pair of apartments to find in both my family and political composure. Books behind my back, bail money paved into the streets, playing euphoria, euphoria, cliche. Bracing for the medicines, recoil. I'm sharing the dirty daily sounds with my friends. Black Jacobin's underground topography of a grandmother saying psychology of the mask now. Teeth of the mask again. You know, all street life to a certain extent starts fear. Sometimes with a spiritual memory even. pre dying soul clap, your father dying even. Maybe I've pushed the city too far. My sensitivities to landfill districting and minstrel whistles, white supremacists, graffiti on westbound rail guards, all overcome and reauthored. Reauthored by revolutionary violence that chose its own protagonists of muted stage of genius. You know, the garbage is growing voices. Condensed Marxism for warrior depressors, underpasses in their pockets because they just might be deities, a decent bid on the panther, name of merciful Marxism. This quiet at home life, a metaphor for relaxing next to a person who was relaxing next to a gun. I stare at my father for a few seconds and return to my upbringing, return to the souls of Ohio black folk. You know, revolution down there pegging at this point. You know what the clown wants? The respect of the ant. Wants to interpret pain only. Wants to pull a 38 out of a begging bowl. Wants me to hurt my hand on this pen. I'm not tired of these rooms. Just tired of the world to give them relativity. My only change of clothes prosecuted the government finally learned how to write poems. Shoot out that briefly a line. That make up a parable. The parable is like white bodies are paid well. But do white men even have leaders? Are all white people white men? A rat pitches a river. Can almost taste the racial divide. Can almost roll a family member's head into a city hall, legislative chamber, and those who in this good book will find me. All I do is practice, Lord. Decide not to talk out of anger ever again. Met my wife at the same time we met new audience members for our pain. We pass each other cigarettes and watch cops win. A city gone uniquely linear, Harlem of the West, do a true universe. I'll always remember you in fancy clothes, my wife said. So here I sit, twisting in silk ideation. Rifle made of post bellum tar, targets made of an honest language. This San Francisco poetry is how God knows it is me whining. Riding among the lesser respected wolves, lesser observed militarization, Dixie List prison bookkeeping. I mean, the California Great Coast are coming. Lynch mob gossip and bourgeois debt collection is, is tempting to change professions mid poem. In, in a Chicago briefing, the white sergeant saying, Blank slate for all of us after this black organizer is dead. Stand academic, so some two buck wine at the tank parade, Bay of Nothing Lord, just, just nuclear cobblestones, gun line athleticism, and the last of the inherited asthma. Children giving white dolls to play with and fear, facial expressions borrowed from rich people's shoe strings. I can hear hate and teach hate and call tools by people names and name people dead to themselves. No one getting naturalized except fell agents soon. Call me the equator and throw soon. I'm sorry to make you relive all this, Lord, all this pre dime monarchy, my friends. Uh, 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 putting up politician posters and storing the remainder of the paste and the menstrual script, shoving it to the walls by the elders, my children sharpening quarters on the city's edge. For these audiences, I project myself into a ghost-like state. For these gangsters, I do the same. Every now and then, take a nervous look, East sleep becomes Christ, sleep starts going to racial identity. Do you have a spiral, Lord? Has the gay age portrayed? Man, be patient with my, my poems, Lord. So much pain, it's a point to cry with me, and it has to be afraid straight to come with it. Lord, is that my revolver in your hand? You know, <clears throat> uh, better presence than these have yawned the cages have called us holy slaves, filled the school libraries with cop documentaries. I don't have money for food. Shit. I don't have a present moment at all. You know, a lot of God can happen in three seconds. Not much heaven, though. Here's a man before a fight, a leave me alone type character emerging from the penniless death of a one-way street fiction, a fancy way of saying I'm gonna make it even if I have to drive backwards. All I have is chord changes in a thousand backhands, driving the street like I'm choking it, car full of nephews, hasn't been a sun since November. And there hasn't been a street I can't choke to death, this city better back down. You see this gun on the table and something about staying until it off your stable, why wouldn't I protect everyone? All my deaths leave late, my son better be quick. My daughter better shoot first, because we, we fall for no one. We fall for nothing, OK? The first thing you feel is the heat. Slade would tell me. 
Try to tell me about possession. Drink life need is what I'm mostly here. And most of the world leaves me alone to breathe small like a giant to go to jail every once in a while when the genocide kicks up in late May. When politicians have too easy a time, I'm guessing backwards out of one-way street in honor of myself and in honor of you. If you understand the nature of the world, how long I've been just like my father, one hell of a resemblance, says the anxiety of the neighborhood. This is a crossroads or a crossroads narrative, but so much crossroads, people get in the habit of turning back, turn back on to find themselves remembering me, but not my last words. A man before a fight to feel the heat, but there's nothing to keep in mind, there's nothing to remember, really there's nothing to be. It's just this moment, then another, then stare, then it all becomes stable, then the table lets go fuzzy, and Friday's an unfamiliar face peeking in the window. It's cool to panic for a second. Composure's wasted on your worst enemies. People are marked on that sidewalk. You're the only thing life size. Everybody knows this in the wire hanger empire. When the blood stops walking, that feeling isn't father enough to be permission to fold. You better swing one more time. You know that father of yours rose from the grave and said, just give me five more minutes. He said, running water is a myth. It's us who are running up, down, and all alongside this water. And people don't rise from the grave. They're not laid down, even. It's us who flip all around their bodies. So beware when the people around you all look like they're about to jump. It might be your time. You feel the heat. And when four walls demand to be four walls and the earth outside, mutes don't panic. Don't try to recreate the earth outside. Don't tell jokes to yourself. Don't even talk disrespectfully to the four walls. Instead, unclench your fist and walk away. There might be heaven if you understand the nature of the world. Thank you so much. Um, Tonga Eisen Martin, and Toko Gordon Moore. Next week, join us for um, Bernadette Von Hoy and Richard Maxwell. <laughs>